Hello and welcome to the show. Today we have got three more vehicles taking on the Pine Hills Rally and we start with something that looks rather bizarre. This is a kind of facelift, different styling on a sunburst, different front bumper, kind of a wide body kit along with some aerodynamic wheel covers. It makes it look very weird and truth be told that's the main reason why I picked it because it looks different to just about everything else that uh, I've seen with this. But uh, underneath it all, of course, it is still a sunburst. This is a very powerful engined version. It is all-wheel drive, so there is potential to go relatively fast here. It doesn't have racing slicks, so in terms of corner speed, of course, it is not going to be uh, right up there. I don't know what it's really got in terms of suspension. It's going to be, I would imagine, more race-based than rally-based, so we are likely to bounce around across the bumps. However, yeah, there is a lot of a lot of power, and perhaps even with it being a little bit more of a race-based suspension setup, it might be better in the Sunburst than potentially some other vehicles for dealing with the bumps. Certainly more so than the likes of the Formula One car. So far, things are going well. It's yeah, very fast up towards the Meek Peak. Oh, carried too much speed on the way in. Couldn't get out of that. So we're going to go for a tumble and a tumble, and kind of comes to a relatively. All things considered, a relatively controlled halt. It pulls ever so slightly to the left, but on the most parts, it's not too not too unhappy with about three rolls across a field at 80 miles an hour. <laughs> Sunburst proving to still be a tough car. Easy to get carried away with that acceleration as I'm about to do here into the hairpin. Like, well, there we go. Like so. Very easy to get carried away in cars like this that have got so much speed, but uh, perhaps not quite enough grip. Let's see if we can get the meat peak right this time around. Oh, we're going to lose the back end quite dramatically down there. We're oh Christ, that's a weird one. Uh, <laughs> we kind of hit. It was kind of bobbling around really strangely, it bobbling around after we left the meat peak, and I, I guess the front wheels were just about enough off the ground that I couldn't get any steering, and then once we were out wide, you're carrying way too much momentum, and well, nothing you can really do. You know, it's nice out of the hairpins and so on, but I've got to be so careful down here to not spiral out of control. I mean, even then, that was relatively calm in terms of uh, my approach to the meat peak. Oh, that's a new place to roll. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen a car roll there before. Not in that manner. Um, I mean, I will be honest, it does look like it's more at home in the water than it does on the land, this version of the car. But that is an odd place to, uh, to go off, or to go off in that manner. As we leave the pit stop chicane, these bumps are likely to be mean to the poor car. Just about get it right. It's all a little bit sketchy, though. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> I think I got caught out by some cambering or something on the road as I tried to chuck it around the final corner. It uh, kind of, yeah, moved it across to the left ever so slightly and then just didn't stand a chance of getting it back again. Um, whoops. Well, the strange looking sunburst is having many issues when it comes to the bumps. Turn one is not ideal. Turn, turn one is really not ideal. Bad things have gone on again. I thought I was going slow enough that time. I wasn't. I really wasn't. Nope. <laughs> That's uh, buried in the trees again. As we head in towards the pit stop chicane again. The car's finding bumps that other cars simply haven't, and I've taught all of the... Ah, trying to be clever. Trying to be clever, and I tore all of the left-hand side of my car apart. <laughs> not, Not so clever, that one at all. Any chance I have to make up time is then almost immediately removed by the need to be so incredibly slow when the going gets quite rough. I just can't take any... You see how much we're fighting the car even there? I can't even get it back on the course. We're going to go for a roll. Ah, uh, into the drink again. Bloody hell. We're fine. We're fine. We're not fine. Maybe we're fine. We're eating a front bumper slightly, but it'll... Do onto the bridge we go. We're gonna bounce and bounce and bounce. Try and keep our foot down. Recover it. Not recover it. No. Climb. Climb. Climb your way back up. <laughs> oh, I don't like this car. I'm afraid to say, 
enjoyment is at a fair minimum right now with this car all down to absurdly, absurdly stiff suspension. It's, in some ways, I feel almost less compliant than the FR17, the Formula 1 car, down here. It just reacts. It doesn't even seem to matter what speed I'm going, it's just you'll hit something. I think in some ways it's more annoying because I'll hit stuff one time and I'll be fine and then I'll hit it at a better angle or at a slower speed where I think it's going to do better and it'll just ping off randomly. It's not a happy car at this particular course. Now it'd probably be fine if you're at a proper smooth racetrack but when you do have small bumps, small jumps and crests and so on to deal with it just can't. It takes the tiniest little thing to upset the vehicle and it'll spin wildly out of control. Can we get it through the pit stop chicane neatly? Yes. Now we are going to get a bit of air time there so I've got to be careful with that uh, throttle. Now it will be the traction and the power to get it up this final hill nicely as we're going to launch it around the last corner, across the finish line we go. And that's probably the least the car deserves in terms of uh, <laughs> crashing it. It's not good for this course. It looks mad. Uh, drives rather poorly though down here. It's just such stiff suspension. So, so difficult and unpredictable across the bumps that... Uh, yeah, a lot of frustration, shall we say, with this car. The second vehicle today to take on this demanding course is the Bolide Corsa Competizione. Essentially a Ferrari F40C, the race-going car. A fantastic, fantastic looking mod. Probably has a fair amount of potential to go damn fast down this course as well. But we're likely to see suspension issues. Ooh. Bit of turbo lag going on. Ooh, Christ. Yet yeah, suspension might not be too God, enjoyable. That has lost a wheel quite quickly. That also did not take long to go spectacularly wrong. Should be mighty here if we're in the right bit of the rev range. Yeah, up towards 90 miles an hour. Anything faster than it was the FR17. How are we going to deal down the Meek Peak? Surprisingly comfortable. Oh, God damn that turbo lag got me. I thought I was good to go flat out. And then we just as we hit six, 7,000 RPM, it was enough to spin the wheels, tip me left ever so slightly. And that's a murdered, murdered race car. Is understeerier than I was expecting it to be, and then oversteerier, and then wheel fully offier. Sure. Uh, <laughs> wheels do not like staying on this car. For a race car, remarkably happy at dealing with the bumps, but there are so many other problems like that one, and it's just going to be off, and I can't stop that from going. Uh, relatively minor damage that time, at least we kept all the wheels on it. But that <laughs> turbos are ridiculous. Now down here, as I've, ooh, as I've already said, it's quick, but that's not going to be helpful when you get on two wheels towards the meat peak. Don't know how a car get onto two wheels there before. Um, it's not the line to take. I'll say that much. Well, I've driven many city cars in many situations, and while. This particular vehicle, handling-wise, is not too bad here. The power band is giving me great grief. It really does make this car barely drivable, certainly barely drivable fast down here. You end up in a situation where you have no power when you need it, and by the time you've got to some power, you don't need all of that power. You're going into a corner, or you're about to... Uh, exit somewhere and you get that just huge dump of power to the rear wheels that wants to spin the car out at a much wider much more open circuit this would be a very quick car on the pine hills rally stage it doesn't work i don't know if you could even do anything with the gears to help it because i think you're always going to end up in a situation where you've got like here for example Nothing, 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 nothing. If I have shorter gear ratios, though, the power gets dumped out so quick, we just spin all the way through there, and that wouldn't help matters either. See, nothing. I actually could uh, build up some revs to try and get some go to it, and there's just nothing. It's pointless. It's pointless. Absolutely terrible up that hill. There is just no... Uh, <laughs> there's 
nothing. I mean, I, I could have left it in first, and I might have got up that hill a couple of times quicker. I thought it was worth a try, sticking in neutral rev and go, but it, even then, I just didn't work. It's just, it can't drive up the course. The, the turbos are so brutal in this car, on such a tight course, that it doesn't, it doesn't work. As I said, if I had it at lower gears, go lower gear ratio, if I could change those, uh, then it would have just issues of spinning the wheels, because as soon as we are on power, that's all I'm going to get. I'm just going to get wheel spin, and then that's not going to help either. The power delivery in this is so brutal that it makes it undrivable pretty much on a course like this. As I said, bigger, wider, open courses be very, very fast. A tight, twisty hill climb course, and we can't even dig ourselves out of here. Um, over rev damage. Come on, get out. There we go. It just we couldn't even climb the hill. This is a 700 horsepower race car, and it cannot climb the hill because of the way the power is delivered. That's a pretty big problem. Well, why not finish off today's episode of Difficult Cars with the Oldsmobile Regency Limo. This, though, is the Venom version, which means 550 horsepower in my limo. Going down a course that is very narrow. At least we don't have any turbo lag to worry about. We don't have any gears to worry about, because it's only got an automatic. And maybe the suspension will be half decent. The long wheelbase won't help with agility. However, having had the two vehicles to drive that we have so far today, this might be quite refreshing, which is a weird thing to say, but there we go. I can't quite get a camera angle to a place that I want it to be at with this, but uh, it'll work. I think we're going to have to employ some handbrake tactics around these tighter hairpins, just the sheer wheelbase of this car not helping. The diff is also a pile of garbage. Uh, <laughs> a lot of one-tire fires going on. It's wobbly, but that's a comfort after the uh, sunburst. It's still going pretty fast up towards the meat peak, which is probably not going to be helpful. We don't want to be doing the meat peak sideways in a limo. Oh, somehow we've got away almost. Almost got away with all that. Uh-oh. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the best bridge impalement we've done yet. I'll be honest. I don't know if I can actually pull the... I'd like to pull the limo out, because I'd like to see... Ooh. <laughs> that's a pretty damn good bridge... bridge oh, whoops. Sorry, that, that someone else could have that. Oh, don't pull the door. Could pull it, is that the chassis? I think it is. Chassis rail we've got there. That is quite the impressive bridge impalement that we have done right there. Um... <laughs> Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty big, uh, oopsie. I'm going to have to be mindful. I think perhaps the biggest concern might be trying to get it through the pit stop chicane if we could avoid the bridge again, which we do. Oh, we don't. Damn it. We got it wheeling across the bridge and I guess didn't align it well enough and that's taken out a tyre. Uh, how are we going to fit through here with a lot of uh, sideways? Uh, it'll do it. It'll do it. It's going to be a bit awkward, but it will make it. The meat peak has been done relatively cleanly as we head on to the Maple Bridge. I'm not sure I'm going to stop that. Oh, come on! Oh, too... Too late on the brakes down there. Just a couple of miles an hour too much speed and couldn't gather it all back up, but apparently don't have the traction to get out of here even if I wanted to. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No limo. Bad. Oh, we've sunk it. Well, this limo is an interesting thing to drive. I will say that much about it. It isn't as wholly terrible as you might expect. I am being kind of cautious on the brakes. It's not that the suspension can't take it. It's that uh, the car can at times get overhangs caught on the floor. And it actually kind of carries you along a little bit. So if you aren't uh, too careful with the, with the vehicle into some of these corners, you'll get into, uh, get into trouble very much using the handbrake to uh, help turn this big beast. Not really wanting to get it sideways, it's just kind of helping rotate the rear so we can get the car sorted out. I'm trying to minimise wheel spin where I can, but we do need to uh, 
work, shall we say, to get this car through the tighter corners. Oh, we're on a bit of a wonky line down the Meek Peak, but I think we can probably get away with it, yeah. It's remarkably good at getting away with the Meek Peak. Up across the Maypole Bridge we go. Don't get carried away carrying speed here. Downhill section can really catch cars out. Uh, now, oh, swing it through the pit stop chicane. We have done. Diff Destroyer, I'm not sure, will be that kind to the uh, limo. The Diff did not feel good in this earlier on. And, of course, it's such a tight corner, but that power at least is a little bit more available in this than it was in that uh, bolide. And across the line we go with the limo. Ooh, what have we done to that rear? Uh, <laughs> there's some movement with the rear axle that I don't think it should be doing. I don't quite know what caused that. I know we clipped a tree slightly, but oh, look at that. Yeah, that's like very, very strange. Oh, we've kind of completely put the rear axle out of position. Not really sure what did that in that finish line kerfuffle, but something has very much upset the limo. And I'm not going to be able to drag that back out, I don't think, with it uh, behaving in that. Maybe if I can get to a slightly lower point. More capable, a lot more capable than I expected it to be. I'm going to be honest. And a lot nicer to drive than the other two cars that we've had today. It's really well and truly wedged in here. I don't, <laughs> don't think it's, it's going to get out with that much movement from the rear. Yeah, that's quite impressively broken. Quite impressively broken back there. But uh, yeah, much more impressive to drive than I ever expected a limo would be down this course. On to the leaderboards next, and it is amazingly high from the slightly bizarre covered up sunburst. A 105.1 puts it in a seventh place. It is only a fraction down on the SBR4. It beats the K series, it beats the Bolide race car, the Moonhawk race car, in fact. While it was horrible to drive across the bumps, and you had to go so incredibly slowly down any of the bumpy sections, the brute force of that car, the acceleration that it could muster, and I guess the speed that it could get up the hill as well will certainly have helped it. I was not expecting that to be as high up the leaderboard as it is. It's a little bit, it's a couple of seconds down on the 94 Covert, but still, that was pretty damn quick. The Bolide Corsa, though, is a fair way down. It is a joint 15th place with the Covert Rally Car, 109.2. Even with the turbo lag, up until the pit stop chicane, it was keeping fairly similar pace to the sunburst. And then it loses all of that time. It can't do the hill. It's barely, barely functioning in terms of getting up that hill. So, yeah, the time's always going to be lost. And there's a lot of turbo lag issues earlier on. Suspension very good on that car. Suspension very good, and I think at another, another point later down the line, we may well have a go with a slightly different variation, and I suspect there is a very, very quick car in all of that. The uh, Regency limo is perhaps unsurprisingly all the way down the bottom, and 115.7 from that vehicle. It isn't quite last, it does beat the blue collar, but uh, can't beat the Fiat, or the, the Fiat 1, the uh, Caprice wagon, and so on the Barstow Night Snake. Honestly, in some ways, yeah, it did feel better to drive than the other two cars, but it's a very big, very heavy, very long vehicle, and it's always going to have issues getting through the tight technical stuff. I think just the niceness of having a car that didn't bounce randomly into the scenery or take a year for the turbos to kick in and then immediately spin the vehicle out uh, might have made it feel a little bit faster than it perhaps actually was. But uh, there we go. That is going to be it for this episode. As ever, I shall link all the mods used in the description so you can download them. Have a go with them yourself. But uh, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye.